Genesis chapter 11 to start with. We'll look at several main passages, but uh, we'll start here in Hebrews 11 and verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength, to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they'd been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Now I'm using this this text as our beginning, because um, we sing songs like, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. Uh, that's the thought of, of this passage. Here were people who, although they lived on earth, they knew that their real home was heaven. And as Christians, that's our attitude. You know, we, we sing about heaven. Uh, but I found this, when, uh, when we speak of someone going to heaven, we often speak very sadly. And, and it's because there's the knowledge that death is the entrance to heaven. And it is a difficult thing. Uh, you know, we sang this morning in the, the song, The Sweet By and By, uh, by faith we can see it afar. You know, heaven is not a place that we've been yet. Uh, we didn't come from heaven. Jesus did. Uh, I've done a lot of funerals, and um, it's hard to be real happy at a funeral, but uh, uh, the, I've been to some where there's been, there's been some rejoicing. God does call death an enemy. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, the last enemy that will be destroyed is is death. And it's an enemy because the cause of death is sin. Israel had a a tremendous reminder all the time in the blood sacrifices of how awful death and sin is. Now, we, we don't have that, but we look back to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You know, for the Jews, when they brought a lamb... I was an adult before I realized that the person bringing the sacrifice actually killed the sacrifice. I don't know if you knew that. There there were others that just the priest did, but when you brought a personal sacrifice, you put that lamb to death. And man, what a terrible reminder of how awful sin is, uh, of how awful our sin is. And yet, um, sometimes people blame God for it. I've had more than one person in my life who, uh, you know, a loved one has died, and, and they, how could a God of, of love do this? Uh, turn, if, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and uh, verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the difference between Adam and Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 <clears throat> It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. See, the reason for death is that Adam and Eve chose to sin. And by their sin came death on all of us. We get their heritage. We're born in Adam. I've often said, we we don't have to teach our children how to sin. Uh, We do have to try and point them to the Lord and and try and help them uh, recover from what they inherited from us. 
and uh, to have a new heritage in, in Jesus Christ. You see, in Christ, we see a different side of death. Look at the next page there, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. In my Bible, it's the next page. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, you'll notice as we read this morning, several times the word sleep will be used about death. And I, I believe it's talking about our body. Our body is gonna, just going to be laid aside. It, no life in it. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and it's talking about we're going to be changed. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus, uh, through, I'm sorry, our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See, the Bible says, there's a different side to death when you see it in Christ. Uh, he's pulled death's stinger. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been stung by a honeybee, uh, but usually when a honeybee stings you, its, it's stinger comes out, but it, it still stings you. <laughs> and boy, it hurts. But if that stinger's come out on somebody else, that bee can't hurt you anymore. And that stinger came out in Jesus Christ. He took death's sting. And he says the strength, the strength of sin is the law. Listen, the law never commends you. The law condemns you, condemns me. It shows us where we're wrong. And Christ took upon himself. He fulfilled the law. He took upon himself our sins. Sin's strength was overcome in Jesus Christ. And for the Christian, death becomes the door to heaven. Death still has sorrow. Uh, Listen, if you're going to cry when somebody goes overseas, you're probably going to cry when they die as well. Uh, you know, when someone leaves. We sorrow when Christians die. But the Bible tells us we don't have to sorrow like those who have no hope. Now look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you would, and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I mentioned we're going to read several fairly extensive passages this morning. And we are getting to the point where we are going to talk about heaven, so we will get there. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. There's that term again. That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words." As Christians, we know from God's Word that we are going to spend eternity with the Lord. Now, there's going to be those who've, who've died and gone before, and, and Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Now, I don't understand what's going on in heaven right now a whole, whole lot. There's a whole lot of things we won't know about heaven until we get there. But I know the Bible says, when I die as a Christian, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I'm satisfied with that. I think being with, with the Lord will be good enough. Uh, someone has said... Uh, Jesus will be what makes it heaven for me, and I know he's there. Uh, there's comfort. There's hope. And uh, I would ask you this morning, do you have that hope? Yes. Is your hope based on what Jesus has done? I talk to people all the time who have a false hope. We're, I can't remember who it was now. We were talking to somebody this week, and he was saying some, to be honest with you, dumb thing about heaven. Uh, you know, people have some of the dumbest beliefs about heaven. It, usually what it is, is, it's some sensual desire that they have here on earth. They think, yeah, that'll all be fulfilled in heaven. There's even religions based on that. You go to heaven and 
Anyway, we won't, we won't go into that. Uh, we need to have a hope based on God's Word, based on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as we read there in Hebrews, we seek a country, a heavenly country, a place that God prepared. Listen, I don't want a remade earth. I don't want this kind of messed around a bit. I, I want God's perfection in heaven. And you know, heaven is real. I, w when you spell heaven, spell it with a capital H, just like you would Perth or Brisbane or uh, any other place. It's God's throne. Uh, it's his dwelling place. When uh, they asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he said, well, pray like this. Our Father, and what's the next word? Which art in heaven. God is in heaven. Now, wherever that is, that's, uh, that's where, where God is. And, and Jesus knew that. In uh, John chapter 14, uh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Now, listen, it's easy to get troubled in this world, isn't it? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Like we read in Thessalonians. You know, those that have died in Jesus are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. Uh, Jesus knew that heaven is real. In Acts chapter 7, somehow as Stephen was dying, he saw it. Uh, because of his testimony for Christ, Stephen uh, was killed. Uh, they took him outside the city and they threw rocks at him until he died. But uh, before he died, uh, the Bible says, he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, here's what he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And he died and was taken to be, be with the Lord. Uh, it's possible that Paul saw heaven. And you know, it's interesting. The Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about what heaven is like. Now, I, I don't know why. But we can see some of the nature of heaven. If you, if you turn to Revelation uh, chapter 22 and uh, 21, 20... Uh, 21 first. This is actually about the, the New Jerusalem, but I think it gives us an indication of what heaven is like. And let me say this. Heaven will not be boring. Uh, you know, the world pictures heaven like people sitting around on clouds and strumming on harps. Uh, I don't think either one of those would be particularly true. Um, there's no Peter at the gates. Uh, there's no judgment by our works. Uh, we don't become angels. I, ho I hope you know that. God made angels angels. He made you you. Um, but we get a, a good description here of the, of the new Jerusalem. Let me read Revelation 21, starting with verse 1. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So this is uh, something that God is going to do. He says this is God's tabernacle <clears throat> that he's going to uh, present to us, coming down from God out of heaven. And I think he gives us an idea of some of the things that are, are going to be true of heaven. Look at uh, chapter 22 and verse 1. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Uh, it's full of life. Uh, it's not cold and lifeless. You know, you think of the description you hear of some of the things there in Revelation 21 of the walls and the streets of gold. That, that sounds kind of cold in, in a way, but it's just it's the beauty of, of it that he's describing. But then he begins to talk here about all the life that's there. Uh, in verse 3, I'm sorry, in verse 2, in the midst of the street of, of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. Uh, fruitful. Verse 3, there shall be no more curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it and His servants shall serve Him. Uh, no more curse. You know, what a blessing that will be just to be rid of the curse that's here. You know, the Bible says in Romans 8, the whole world groans under the curse of sin. 
that won't be there anymore. Uh, back in uh, verse 21, verse 4, he says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. You know, I was thinking about heaven this week, and one of the things that will be a blessing are the things that won't be there. Uh, there will be no more sorrow. Now, what a blessing that will be. No more death. Now, no more pain. He says, the former things are passed away. It will be new. Now, what a blessing it will be. Uh, not only that, he says in, uh, sorry to move back and forth here, but chapter 22, the end of verse 3, he says, the, the throne of God is there and of the Lamb, and His servants shall serve Him. There's going to be organization. It's not going to be chaos. We're not just going to be running around willy-nilly. And there'll be plenty to do. If you know anything about God, God is a God of, of order and beauty, and God will he'll make life interesting for us. It'll be a, it'll be a joy to, to be with Him. In uh, verse 4, He says, They shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. Uh, I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but uh, that's going to be an interesting time. And it's just saying we're going to have communion and fellowship with the Lord. Uh, God is, we'll see Him. Uh, we'll have communion with Him. Uh, in verse 5, there shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Uh, there'll be glory. Now, I've had people read that, and they say, well, my favorite thing to do is sleep. And how can I sleep if there's if there's no night. <laughs> uh, listen, you'll have a new favorite thing to do when, when you get to heaven. Uh, I've heard people say some of the funniest things about, oh, I'm sure this will be in heaven, that'll be in heaven, uh, you know, Coca-Cola or you know, something like that. Uh, listen, if that's your favorite now, you'll have a new favorite there, and it, it won't be a problem. Uh, you'll love it. Uh, there'll be glory. There'll be light. In uh, chapter 21, verse 11, having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, uh, clear as crystal. Uh, chapter 21, verse 22, I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. It'll just be pure worship of the Lord. It, it won't be ceremonial. It won't be representative. It'll be exactly what we've always looked forward to, being with Him and worshiping Him. Verse 23, the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And by the way, let me go back to that sleep thing. The reason we have to sleep is because our bodies are breaking down, and we, we won't be any more there. Uh, what a blessing it'll be to, to have life. And you know, we, as you think about heaven, some things we can know. We know God will be there. Uh, you know, the, like I said, when Jesus gave us the Lord's Prayer, he, he said, pray like this, Our Father which art in heaven, uh, Jesus will be there. You know, as Stephen saw um, at the end of the book of Mark, so I can find it here, uh, in many places, the Bible just talks about that's, that's where he was going when he, he left this earth. Mark 16, 19 it says, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Uh, very clear, very plain. Of course, angels will be there. You know, we think of angels in heaven. Uh, Matthew 24, 36 talks about the angels of heaven. And God's people will be there. You know, as we, we read there in Revelation 21, uh, those who have His name on their forehead. Uh, Revelation 21, uh, 3 uh, said, They shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them, and be their God. And the Bible tells us that's going to be saved people. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's, it's both Old and New Testament believers. I remember as a kid asking my, my dad, how did people get saved in the Old Testament? He said the same way they did in the New Testament, by faith in Jesus. Now, they were saved by faith in the coming Jesus. I, I don't know which is easier. I don't guess either one is. It's still by faith. Yeah, you know, we look back, and yet people won't believe. Yeah, it's a historical fact that Jesus died for our sins. And yet there's people who say, oh, he never existed. And there were those who before Christ came, you know, when God writes it down, it's going to happen. That's just it. And God wrote down all these things, hundreds of things about the coming Jesus. 
And there were those who believed. And by faith, you know, like we sang, by faith we can see it afar. Well, both Old and New Testament uh, will be there in heaven. But you know, there's, there's other things that will be there. As I, as I looked at this subject, you know, it's not just people and God and, and so on. Colossians 1.5 says, our hope is laid up in heaven. Yeah, you know, when we get to heaven, all that we've hoped for in, in the Lord, there it is. And not by faith anymore, by sight. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. You know, what we believe now by faith, we're going to see as we get to heaven. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, he says, Our inheritance will be in heaven. You know, it's, it's real easy to get discouraged by this world, isn't it? But be encouraged. This is not our inheritance. <laughs> All right? Uh, 1 Peter 1.4 says to an inheritance, and I need to go back just a little bit. Uh, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Your inheritance is in heaven. Now, by faith, we believe it today. Uh, God writes it down. Uh, many, many things. God says, this is what I've done for you. This is what is true. But as we stand in heaven, uh, what a blessing it will be to receive our inheritance in Christ. Uh, Jesus in Matthew 5 and verse 12, uh, in general, put it that we'll receive our reward in heaven. Now, I, I, I'll say this. Uh, sometimes when I do a funeral, if I'm not sure if a person is saved, I'll just say they've gone to their reward. Because, listen, God, God will not do wrong. If they're saved, they've gone to heaven. If they're not saved, they've gone to hell. But as Christians, when we get to heaven, uh, Matthew 5, uh, 12, he says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. And he relates it to persecution. He says, uh, when you're going through persecution here, man, look forward to heaven. There's a great reward there. And uh, we, we need to understand that. Revelation 21, he says, in heaven there'll be nothing defiled. Aren't you tired of things that are defiled? Things that don't work right, and things that don't keep their promise, and uh, things that, that aren't, aren't good. Revelation 21, 7, uh, um, 21, 27, there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, we go through sickness here. There'll be no sickness in heaven. Nothing defiled. Uh, we go through family problems. Listen, no more. No more of that. Uh, we go through country problems. You know, it's, it's hard. You know, politics and all the things. No, no more of that. God will just rule and it'll be right. I'm looking forward to heaven. Nothing defiled. And he makes a statement there. They which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's the only ones uh, that will, will be in heaven. Those that are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's important to understand who is the Lamb. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, said, Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb. Uh, in Revelation chapter 5, uh, there's a, an account where they, uh, they were looking. And uh, who could open the book, they said. Who, who's worthy to open the book? And later on in, in verse 12, they said, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And it's interesting in that chapter, Revelation 5, he, he's, he, he's related not only as the Lamb, but as the Lion of Judah. He, he's both the Lion and the Lamb. And uh, Jesus is, is that Lamb. It's His book. It's not my book. It's not a church book. Listen, you can't get to heaven by having your name in a church book. I've known people who thought they were Christians because they were Americans. <laughs> well, we're a Christian country, aren't we? They'd say. Uh, listen, it's not a country book. It's Jesus' book. It's the Lamb's book. Amen. The Lamb's book of life. And uh, Jesus is the way to heaven. He's always been the way to heaven. We read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Well, the next verse says, he say, talking to his disciples, Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Well, Thomas has to speak up. Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, Philip then says, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. See, God came. Uh, God on earth. Uh, God with us. You know, we sing about it at Christmas, and it's true. He's the Lamb. He's the way. Uh, it's His heaven. And uh, He's the door, Jesus said in, in John chapter 9. Jesus is the Lamb. It's the Lamb's book of life. In John 1.12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The entrance to heaven is God's entrance. The entrance to heaven is the door. And the door is Jesus Christ. Uh, we sing a song with the kids. One door and only one, and yet its sides are two. Inside and outside. On which side are you? It's as simple as that. A person comes through Jesus, or they don't come at all. He's always been the way to heaven. He's, he always will be the way to heaven. Paul looked forward to heaven. In uh, Philippians chapter 1, he said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I have to say, I only ever heard one sermon at a funeral that really reflected that. It was a fellow, uh, I heard him preaching actually on the radio, and he was preaching his wife's funeral. I can't imagine and man, he really preached. And he preached the glory of God and the, and the beauty of heaven. And uh, You know, really when you think about it as Christians, death has lost its sting. And for, and for us as Christians to die, glory! Yeah, it's the entrance to heaven. Uh, and like I said, I mean, there's sadness and there's sorrow. But when we know someone's gone to heaven, uh, listen, we can rejoice. And Paul was able to say, I'm in a strait betwixt two. Having a desire to depart and be with Christ which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. You say, well, I guess I'll hang around and help you out until the Lord takes me home. Uh, heaven. There's a, a song I came across some, some time ago, and uh, he relates life to you know, traveling on life's sea. And you, you finally, he says, but just think of stepping on shore and finding it's heaven. Yeah, as troublesome as life is, just imagine when you put your foot on heaven's shore and you're finally home. What a blessing. That's our hope. That's what God has, has done. We looked in Hebrews as we started, and he talked about seeking a heavenly city. And in other places, he talks about being a, a citizen of heaven. Let me ask you this morning, are you a citizen of heaven? Are you a citizen of heaven and a stranger and pilgrim on earth, or... Are you a stranger to heaven? It's so important for you to understand. Uh, when we sing, this world is not my home, uh, some people are saying, well, this world really is my home. If you're saved, heaven is your home. And let me encourage you, live like heaven's your home. Now, I don't mean, there's a phrase we use, don't be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. But we need to be, realize we are citizens of heaven. That's our hope. Uh, we'll not, you know, we're not going to take any of this with us. We're not even going to take our clothes. Strange as that might seem. <laughs> God will clothe us. We won't take our home. You can make the nicest, what are those little houses they make? Mini home or small home or midget home or something. Uh, you, you, can, you can make as nice a home as you want. You won't take it with you. Uh, heaven is our home. If you're saved... Live like heaven is your home. Uh, there's another song. Uh, there's a lot of songs come to my mind. And uh, the first lines are, I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken, for time won't matter anymore. It's called Beulah Land. That's just a, a euphemism for, or that's probably not the right word, a, a phrase for heaven. Looking forward to heaven. Isn't it amazing you can be homesick for a place you, you've never been? Heaven is our home as Christians. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you're not sure, if you feel more tied to this earth than you do to heaven, maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. The Bible says today is the day. Now is the time of salvation. And he, he says you can be saved, you can know you're saved based on, on God's Word. And, and it, it involves, first of all, agreeing with God that you're a sinner and deserve to go to hell. You know, I find that one of the hardest things for people to agree with God about. 
Almost everyone I ask if they're going to heaven says, yeah, I think I will. I've been pretty good. And yet God says there's none good. And by that statement, we call God a liar. We're not good enough to get to heaven. I mean, really, how good would you have to be to get to heaven? It doesn't make any sense even. We're all sinners. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We would not fit into heaven as we are naturally. God has to change us. And we need to believe him. The Bible says it's by faith. Believe that he died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, the Bible says. And it's, it, it takes place, the transaction takes place just by a simple prayer of faith. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's done all the work, and he offers it to us as a finished gift. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope you're looking forward to heaven. I hope you're a citizen of heaven. If you're not, I hope that you'll make sure of, of that today. I'm looking forward to heaven. Uh, let's live like citizens of heaven. Uh, I think sometimes we wouldn't even know what that means, and we'll have to work on that. We're going to sing a, a song, page 91, What a Day That Will Be When My Savior I Shall See. I hope you know that song. Uh, if you don't, just sing it like you know it, all right? Uh, Azrael, will come up and, and lead us in that song, page 91. And let me say this, after the singing is finished, if the Lord is speaking to your heart and you'd like to pray with someone, if you'd like someone to show you from the Bible how to know for sure that you're saved, uh, listen, I'll, I'll be here at the front, uh, seek me out. Uh, if it's a lady, I'll have a lady to speak to you, a, a man will have a man. Uh, but uh, listen, don't, don't go another day if you're not sure about your relationship to God. Uh, you could be in eternity today. There's people die every day who don't expect to. And uh, let me encourage you, know the Lord, know the Lord. Let's sing, oh, what a day that will be. Let's stand together. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the skies, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace. 